So Gary's in his garden and he's unloading his truck. I think I'm gonna go down and see what we can find out. What's going on because he picked up some stuff. Look at his garden. This is winter. He's not doing anything and he's got everything growing. Hi, this is Robbie. And this is Gary from Southern California. So Gary was unloading his truck with his great trash find and I ran down there, but I'm gonna have him take over and tell you everything he got and what's going on in his garden. So I'm always on the lookout for things that we can use in our garden. And we've got a lot of people in our neighborhood that put things out for free. A neighbor was redoing his bathroom and he had a bathtub and a couple of sinks that he was getting rid of. I went over there and I asked him whether I could take them and he said sure. And he helped me load it onto the truck. You could see that it's very heavy it's a cast iron bathtub and it took two of us to lever it onto the back of my truck. To make it easier to remove it from my truck, I sat it on plywood and it's easy just to slide it right off. I've already set up one bathtub. I've got different plans for this one. I'll set it up later on. Right now the important thing is just to get it home and it can sit there until I have time to move it to where I want it. I also picked up a couple of cast iron sinks and I haven't got plans for those yet but they could be useful. I just have to figure out what I want to use those for. While we're down here I may as well walk you through my garden. So my arbor doesn't have a lot of vining plants on it right now. I'm using the space to grow potatoes and onions and a few other things in the totes. When I start planting my vines some of these totes I'll probably move into another part of my garden and I'll set up fresh totes here. One of the vining plants that has continued to grow is the shark fin melon. It's still growing and producing fruit. On the ground I have tons of nettles that I use for tea and compost. That was my extended garden. Now we'll just walk into my original garden. This area is well established, but I continue to make changes. Along here I've got potatoes, onions, some red vein sorrel. To protect them from tree roots, I'm growing them in totes and buckets. Over here I've got my two kiddie pools where I have my water chestnuts. I've been trimming the growth back, they go dormant in the winter. I also have strawberries growing here. With my potatoes, I secession plant them. So when one crop is done, I plant the next one. So that's very productive. I set up the main part of my garden as a wild permaculture garden. Most of the plants are in the ground. I have some raised beds. I have a few things in totes. And I've got a lot of kiddie pools that I've set up as ponds. I've created a nice quiet space for nature to move in. I don't have to use any insecticides or sprays. The birds and the dragonflies that are attracted to my garden take care of any of my insect pests. Over summer, my ponds are covered in sweet potato vines. In winter, that's replaced by duckweed. In our zone, 10A, sweet potato is a perennial. The parts over the water will die back, but on the ground, it'll stay evergreen. A lot of the plants that I grow are volunteers. Often I'll throw seed heads in a place where I'm going to water and that way I can propagate a lot more plants like this artichoke. Along my south facing wall I'm planting dragon fruit. I know it's not the conventional way to grow it but what I want to do is create a hedge and it's still producing fruit in the middle of winter. There are times when I don't have time to spend in my garden Right now, I have other projects that I'm working on, so my garden thrives on a little bit of neglect. The ground is completely covered in wood chips, so that retains the water, and I don't have to water that often. The first birds to nest in my garden 
are the hummingbirds. This one's nested in a passion fruit vine. The variety that I grow is possum purple. It produces a medium sized fruit and it's very productive. I have fruit on it all year round now. The two plants that I have are about two year old. The back of my garden is on the north side. It's fairly sheltered. I grow Canna edulis. I've got a number of banana varieties. I've also got a lot of nasturtiums growing along the ground as a ground cover. I have my blueberries growing in large containers. That way I can control the soil, I can make it more acidic. They're starting to flower now. Fig leaf gourd or shark fin melon is a perennial squash. This is a very sheltered area of my garden. Recently it flowered again and it's producing some new fruit. Along this west facing concrete block wall, I've got some totes elevated. I've planted some heat loving plants here. In the middle of winter, I'm still producing some peppers. The neighbor that I got the bathtub from also gave me some ginger plants. I don't have time to plant them where I want them. So I dug a hole just to protect the rhizomes. And when I dug the hole, I found these tree roots. For the first couple of years, my garden did really well. As time's gone on, the tree roots have migrated in, so I'm going to have to get those under control. Originally, I wasn't planning on growing in totes, but I've found that that's the best, most efficient way to avoid the roots. So moving forward, I'm going to continue to grow in totes, kiddie pools, and directly in the ground. I think the combination of all three is going to be the most productive way that I can garden. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to leave a comment, feel free to leave a comment. If you want to subscribe, please subscribe. With that, thanks for watching and I'll catch you later.